Hello everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another video for SinusStamp.com. Today I'm going to be creating two cards using the stamp set that's included in the June 2023 card kit. So this is the Etched Greetings stamp set and there's lots of really great, elegant, and really vintage looking elements in this stamp set. I decided to create two cards mainly just with stamping and let's get going. Starting out with some of the green cardstock that's included in the kit, and I've cut it to 5x7 so that my final card size is 5x7. I'm using the Stamp and Stencil mat from Simon and Brutus Monroe, and I'm putting that right in the center of the stencil mat. And that's because I'm going to be stamping the images right off the edge of the cardstock. So I'm positioning a couple of the stamps from the stamp set just at the bottom of this green cardstock. I want to eventually fill the entire piece of cardstock with these flower and leaf images, but I'm going to work with them a little bit at a time because I'm going to be heat embossing them. And also because I'm going to be using heat embossing powder, I'm prepping my cardstock with an anti-static powder tool. After I have a little bit of powder on there, then I'll go in with some Versamark ink and start stamping all of my images. So I'm first going to stamp a couple of images at the very bottom of the cardstock. And then before applying my heat embossing powder, I'm actually going to stamp a few more uh, times with these same images. So after I stamped them the first time, I can see a ghost of the image. I cleaned off those stamps with a baby wipe and then moved the images further up on the cardstock. So I'm stamping these again, these are the same two images. And then I'm going to uh, remove these from, or remove the cardstock, I should say, from the stamp and stencil mat. That's because I wanted to have something to hold on to on one end as I peel up the cardstock. So I'm removing it from that sticky mat and I'm going to heat emboss what I've already stamped. Using some gold embossing powder, this is gilded embossing powder from Brutus Monroe, and it looks absolutely beautiful applied to these very intricate and delicate images. This is going to give us a really sophisticated background. It's even going to look like, you know, pattern paper or something like that because the images really fill in and nestle up against each other. So after I had heated all of that embossing powder and it's smooth and melted, I moved my cardstock back into my Misty on top of that stamp and stencil mat, and I've moved the cardstock to the bottom. That's because now I have some images that are going to hang off the top. So I'm first going to stamp this larger one that's just going to nestle right in between those two images that are already there. And then I'm going to remove uh, my project from my Misty, and I'm going to use this image on an acrylic block. I decided to use an acrylic block for this particular part of my stamping because it was extending past the edges of my Misty. So it was just easier to remove it from the Misty and stamp with my images on an acrylic block. So I used the same image for both corners, just used different portions of the flowers. And then I removed it from that sticky mat and I applied more embossing powder. Now, as I was applying the embossing powder here, some of it stuck to the corners and edges, and I thought that looked really cool. So I'm actually going to make that a little bit more purposeful. And I want it to show up on my card, so I've actually trimmed this cardstock down just a little bit. So now it is six and three quarters wide by, oh no, I'm sorry, six and three quarters tall by four and three quarters wide. So just a quarter inch smaller in each dimension. I'm now using a Tim Holtz Distress Embossing Dabber and applying the embossing ink just on the edges of my cardstock. This is going to give me the opportunity to apply that embossing powder just on the edges. It's going to give it a nice edged look. I like to use this a lot on projects where I've used gold embossing powder. I think it looks really, really cool and it's a great way to step up your project without doing anything too intricate or fussy. So I was able to dip the shorter end of my cardstock into this container of embossing powder, but the longer end was just a little bit too big. So I did end up picking up that embossing powder and scooping it over onto my cardstock and sprinkling it on the edge. That applied just enough embossing powder 
And after I tapped off the excess, I was left with just a little bit on the edge of my cardstock. I went around and heat set all of that embossing powder and it gives it a nice finished edge. So I'm going to introduce another piece of cardstock or a different color of cardstock on my card. I'm now going to use some midnight green cardstock from Simon. This is a very rich, deep green, almost black. It's very, uh, gosh, it's just elegant, I think. I prepped my cardstock with some anti-static powder and then stamped the thinking of you greeting from the stamp set. And then I applied the same embossing powder that I used on the lighter green cardstock. So this is going to make it more cohesive by using that same color of embossing powder. I used my heat tool to heat set that until it was smooth and melted. And as you can see, there's still a bit of that anti-static powder hanging out, but not to worry. Um, I just wiped that with a microfiber cloth and that took all that powder away. To trim out my greeting, I used a Simus Stamp six inch T-square ruler and a craft knife from Tim Holtz and Tonic. And I like to put the ruler down and then just do very, very light strokes with the knife until it cuts through all the layers of cardstock. So really, really gentle cutting. You don't want to go in there and try to cut it all in one go because then you don't get a, a very nice cut. Use my scissors and just added a diagonal cut at each corner just to give the illusion of following the line of that image. I then uh, took my greeting and I set it aside and I'm going to add some more color to my stamped background. I'm using the color pine. This is one of the positively saturated inks and I'm using a blending brush just to bring in some color on the edges of my stamped panel. This is going to give some more intensity on all of the, the edges. Now there's still quite a bit of ink sitting on top of that embossed uh, image. So I did take a clean paper towel and buffed off any of that ink that was remaining. I now have two sheets of cardstock, specialty cardstock. One is vellum and one is uh, gold matte cardstock. And I've cut the vellum to an inch and a half and then the gold piece to an inch. And I thought I would put it on my card vertically like that. But then I decided, you know, I'm gonna change this up a bit and I cut the gold strip into little eighth inch narrow strips of gold cardstock. And then I adhered them to the vellum piece. This is going to give just a little bit of a different detailed look to this large sort of ribbon shape that I'm putting on my card. I'm planning to have it go right behind that greeting. And so I thought I would just break up the gold a little bit and have some more narrow strips of cardstock. I did start by putting the glue on the back of the strips of cardstock, but then I realized that it was a little bit easier to apply the glue directly to the vellum and then press that cardstock down on top of the glue. It's just a little bit less cumbersome because these strips of gold cardstock were so, so narrow. So I pressed that down and then I had one more piece to put on. And once again, I put the glue down first and then put the cardstock. And then this gives us a good spot for glue on the back of the vellum. Put a little bit of glue behind those gold strips and then using my grid mat, lining up my card right on the center of the grid mat, I was able to apply my vellum and gold piece perfectly straight. I checked that against a T-square ruler and everything checked out. So I pressed down and then adhered the entire panel to a white card base that was already prepped and folded. I used some uh, foam adhesive to adhere it, so it's popped up a little bit off the surface of the card. I then put some foam squares, and these are foam squares included in the card kit for this month. These are black foam squares. I put that on the back of my greeting piece, and then I just had to adhere it to my card. So this card is pretty much done. Look at all those beautiful gold accents with the gold embossing powder and the cardstock. So now I'm going to move on to a second card, and this one is also just stamping, and it's very easy. I'm using that stamp and stencil mat once again, and I've applied some fog cardstock. It's cut to an A2 size, so currently it is five and a half by four and a quarter tall, and I'm putting some stamps at the bottom. I only want these images to be at the bottom of my card. I don't want it to fill the entire background like I did on my previous card. And I'm also stamping these in a black ink instead of an embossing 
powder. So I'm using some VersaFine Onyx Black Ink, and I used both images from the stamp set and nestled them in right next to each other. And then just to fill out that final right-hand side of my cardstock, I'm actually going to peel up my cardstock from the stamp and stencil mat, and I'm going to move it on the mat so that I can get some stamps in on the right side. So I'm just going to pick that up and move it to that top left corner of the stamp and stencil mat. And that gives me enough room on the side to put this other image in. So I'm just repeating that image that's on the left side, but I'm using a different section. So it looks like it's a completely different image. Inked that up and then press that down onto the fog cardstock. So one of the last things to stamp for this is the greeting. I'm using a grid transparency sheet for this to help me line up my stamp images just right. Both of these greeting stamps are very long, so this helps me get it perfectly straight. And then as I apply those stamp images to the door of my MISTI, I can just peel away that grid transparency sheet. I stamped my greetings in the same exact ink that I use for the flowers. You could also change it up by using a different color of ink, but I decided to use all black. And I'll press that down and walk my fingertips over the greetings. And then I get a really nice, very fine, detailed impression. I think it looks really, really pretty. To add a little bit of drama to the bottom of my card design, I'm taking some slate ink from Simon Says Stamp and a blending brush, and I'm just going to blend in from the bottom of my card design. This is going to just darken up and give some shadow and shading to the very bottom, right around those flowers. And using the color slate was almost not enough gray for me, so I brought in some intense black ink from Simon just to intensify that color right at the bottom of my card. This is going to give it a lot of interest. You could also change this up by using different colors of ink blending in. Then use the Tombow Extreme Adhesive to adhere this panel right to a black card base. And I did cut this uh, panel down to be a little bit smaller. It's actually four, let's see, three and three quarters tall by five and a half or five and a quarter wide. So here are the two cards for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Check out that card kit for June, 2023. You can get the stamp set in the kit itself or on its own. And you can also subscribe to receive this card kit and future card kits. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in another video very soon. Hi there, I'm Heidi, Simon's mama and founder at simonsaysstamp.com. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you like what you just saw, be sure to press the thumbs up and subscribe to see more great content.